This video shows and discusses insects that are involved in decomposition. This topic may not be for everyone. Further notes from week one. There was one little story from my first week of working with the beetles that didn't quite fit in the last episode, so I wanted to go over that today. So on the table next to where I kept my dermestid beetle tanks, they also kept a cricket tank for insects that they were going to feed to their reptiles and other things that they kept in the botanic gardens. So that first week after I got set up, I noticed that in that cricket tank there were a bunch of little black beetles crawling around inside that tank that looked exactly like my dermestid beetles and I was freaking out because I couldn't figure out how they had gotten in there or why they were in there and what had gone wrong. I was trying to figure it out. It looked like the aluminum foil I had put inside of my tank had successfully kept the beetles from being able to crawl up the silicone on the sides and I would check the underside of the lid and there were no bugs hanging out on the underside of my lid. And at this point in time, I didn't have a lot of beetles yet, so they were more interested in burrowing into the cotton that was in the tank than actually getting out. They can't really climb up the glass. In fact, if you take a look at some video that I have from the beetles crawling around inside the little plastic trays, they really can't climb up the sides of the plastic trays very well even. A few of my adult beetles could fly, but I... Anyway, so I was trying to figure out how beetles had gotten into this tank and also why why would they be attracted to this tank because their food source that I thought they would be most interested in was going to be inside their own tank. So I was trying to figure this out and I actually apologized to the guy who's in charge of the botanic gardens there and said, I'm sorry, I don't know how my beetles got into your cricket tank and he just explained to me I actually get these little black beetles a lot of times along with the crickets that they order. And I did some research and found out that it's actually fairly common for people who breed crickets and other kinds of feeder insects to actually send dermestid beetles along with those other insects because they're very good at cleaning up exoskeletons and, and other kinds of waste material that the other bugs leave behind and it actually keeps things fairly sanitary for the other bugs <laughs> that they're kept with. So kind of interesting. So these are dermestid beetles, they're just not my dermestid beetles. And I also didn't add these other beetles to my dermestid colony because there are a couple of different species of dermestids that look very similar to each other. That is Dermestis hemorrhoidalis, which is the one that I'm working with. And Dermestis maculatus is a bit more common actually for other people who keep dermestids for hobby reasons or even professional reasons. Um, Tring is the only museum I know of that uses hemorrhoidalis and maculatus. <laughs> I didn't want to take the risk of introducing a different species into my tank. I wanted to be consistent and be careful to make sure I'm just working with Dermestis hemorrhoidalis, which is what I got from Tring. And so I didn't add any of these other beetles to my tank. But yeah, just kind of a, a funny thing from the first week with noticing that they actually already had dermestid beetles there at the botanic gardens. <laughs>